So in our first section, we're mostly looking at how do we avoid being restrained? How do we escape? Now we're gonna take a look at when they do grab and we know we can get out of the grip, that gives us the ability to um, reverse the reality based on what they're thinking. So here's another way of taking a look at it. If he grabs my wrist, he thinks he's got me. But I know he doesn't have me. I know I'm out. The reality is he doesn't have me, but he thinks he does. So because I know I can get out, this hand, the free one, is the one that can do things, right? So let's take a look at this technique. I know I'm out, but I want this. So when he grabs me, the first thing I do is I pin him. Now look how I'm pinning. My thumb is with my fingers, however it's coming on the fleshy side of his. So I'm looking at his thumb and finger connection, that webbing, my thumb is just getting in position to go hunting for that spot. So when he pins, I grab him back, thumb is in that fleshy spot, fingers are on the back side of his hand. So now if he was to let go, we would still be connected. Now he's not letting go, so I do my outside circle. My arm goes to the outside, over the top, and then from this position, I consolidate downwards. Now here's what's happening. When I go big outside circle, come down, his wrist bends. Bent wrists mean that he cannot hang on to things. If his wrist is firmly folded over, I'm out. Now I know that. Now I got him, he doesn't have me. Take a look again. Pin, thumb is hunting for that spot. Outside circle, as it consolidates, the wrist bends. Then I come out. Next, as my hand comes out and it's free, I'm gonna step backwards so that our arms are in line. The reason I'm stepping backwards, couple reasons. One is I wanna get away from his hips. If I move away from his hips, keeping his hand away from his own hips, and I angle his fingers so they point towards his nose, folding his wrist with firm pressure makes it very hard for him to bend his elbow. Would you bend your elbow? If he brings his hips close, his elbow bends, but I don't want his hips close. So if I'm away from his hips, firm pressure, fingers to the nose, hard to bend the elbow. So in this position, I have control of the elbow even though I'm not touching the elbow, right? Let's do it again. So he grabs, pin, outside circle. As it consolidates, it bends the wrist and out. Move away, right? Left hand, that's free, is gonna come and grab his thumb. So the crook of my thumb and hand are coming and I'm gonna capture his thumb in that spot. My fingers find the back side of his forearm and then I compress thumb towards forearm and now this hand can leave. His wrist is stuck folded because of this position that we call a uh, pistol grip. As I compress thumb towards forearm, it makes his wrist bent. So I want his fingers towards his, his nose and I want it far away from his hips. And now I have control of his elbow through this squishing of his thumb. One more time. The grab, the pin, the outside circle, the bend of the wrist, I'm out. Move away. Find the thumb. Compress. Here we are. All right, so we have a same side wrist grab. We pin, we do our outside circle, it consolidates into the bent wrist. We're free. Then we move out to the side. Same angle, maintain the angle, compress. Now we've got this pistol grip controlling the elbow through the bent wrist because of the alignment and I'm far away from his hips. Now, nobody likes to, to make this work, right? They don't just comply. If I'm trying to fold this over and get away from his hips, it's instinctive to try to undo everything I'm trying to do. So one of the things that makes him feel some relief is to bring his hips close to his hand. Then his elbow starts to be able to bend and he goes, ah, this feels like I'm escaping. Let's move this way. So I'm maintaining my pistol grip. He moves his hips back and look, I take this line of knuckles of his hand and I lay it on my forearm just by twisting. The line of knuckles now finds my forearm. So as he makes his elbow bend because his hips come close, I roll that onto my forearm. Hook his elbow, bring his elbow into your belly. Take your fingers off the forearm and grab the thumb. So now I've got the line of his knuckles against my forearm and wrist. I've got his thumb gripped and I've got his elbow back stuffed. So now if I compress line of knuckles, push belly into elbow and compress his wrist, we have what's called a chicken wing, which is a very, very painful, successful joint lock. 
So be very careful as you apply this because a very little bit goes a tremendous way. So you probably don't even need to try to compress. Get to here, your partner may tap already, and if they don't, very slowly, press belly forward, contract, knuckles backwards, and you've got the chicken wing locked in place, right? In, in law enforcement, they tend to call this the come along, because you can take somebody and say, come along with me, and they go with you. One more time from the beginning. Here. Here. All right, so we have the same side wrist grab. We pin, we do an outside circle, it's big, it consolidates. Bend wrist, I'm free. Move to the outside, grab the thumb, try to compress. Meanwhile, he bends his elbow, and I guide him right into the chicken wing, right? So now we can either compress, take him somewhere, or we can get him to the ground, and here's how we're gonna get him to the ground. My free hand over here is gonna come to the back side of his head. But as it does, I'm gonna let his elbow slip off from the belly. Now, as long as it's backed up on the belly, the compression of the wrist is on. But if it slips off to the side and I compress, he has freedom, I'm starting to lose everything. So I'm gonna to start to lose everything on purpose. This hand goes to his head, I remove the backstop. Meanwhile, the thumb grip that I've got comes up and over his head, I haven't let go of anything. Everything's exactly the same. Push his head through. Hanging on to his thumb, step in a position where they wave bye-bye to themselves. The free hand comes in. The free hand's gonna come find the little pinky's knuckle on the hand. And this hand comes in and complies pressure on that knuckle, and we're bringing it back and over his forearm. The hands work together as a team to do what we call a side wrist lock takedown. Let's take another look from the beginning. It's here to here. Move away. Try to compress. If his hips come, come to the chicken wing. If you want him down on the ground, slip off the elbow, push the head down, walk all the way around, make them wave bye-bye, find that little knuckle, bring it down to the floor. One final time. And then down to the floor. Sometimes as they start spinning, their side wrist lock doesn't come into effect, but they're just off balance and they don't know which way is up and which way is down. They end up on the ground without even applying the joint lock, right? So it's nice when you get the joint lock because you have a sense of control. But the matter of fact is, if they're on the ground and you're standing, you're in a good spot. So this next one is gonna um, also highlight the upper, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, pistol grip. We're gonna get there differently though. So if you would do a cross hand grab instead of a same side. So from the cross hand grip, same idea, I'm gonna pin the wrist, but this time I'm doing my entering footwork, two steps, one, two. But notice that when I do my two steps, I'm taking this hand connection that we built, him and I, and I'm, I have it in front of me, it's leading the show. Now as I take my second step, I back spin, my back to him, I'm going underneath his arm, and I end up to the back side of him. Now take a look. My pinning hand, these fingers are curling, and I'm trying to find the fleshy side of his pinky side part of his hand. But I'm in this position, a lot of times this hand can leave. However, it doesn't need to. I can use it to amplify this particular joint lock. So it's up, it's not down, it's up. And then it's called the corkscrew because it has this direction of twisting as well as lifting simultaneously. Twisting and lifting. Upper corkscrew. Let's take a look again. From a crisscross grab, that's different than we've done so, so far. Pin, step one, step twice. Spin underneath, turn my back. Apply the joint lock. This hand that he originally grabbed, once the technique is on, can come out of there. As it comes out, I use the hook of my thumb to come up and snag his thumb and bring it to his forearm where I'm gripping. This puts us into a neutral elbow, meaning hand is below the elbow, pistol grip. Neutral elbow, this is not neutral, this is not neutral, this is neutral. One more time. Step, step, come underneath, upper corkscrew joint lock is in effect. 
Then we can transition and go to its friend or neighbor, the uh, pistol grip. However, this is not what we're calling done. So his elbow's either gonna go this way or it's gonna go this way. Today we're gonna drop his elbow down this way. So we built an S shape with his hand, right? So now if I'm in this position, I'm gonna be revving a motorcycle's engine with his wrist. Slow and steady rev. 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 And we get pain and compliance. So if you know the bent elbow wrist lock, his arm doesn't know the difference. We're just getting there differently from the pistol grip. From the beginning, please. 